How do you choose the right dysphagia treatment? There are dozens of dysphagia treatment options SLPs can implement, but how does an SLP actually choose the right one? One of the most fulfilling moments a med SLP can experience is watching or hearing about their patient finally eating their favorite snacks or meals with loved ones once again. But in order to get our patients there, we need to know how to create the best dysphagia treatment plan for that person and their specific deficits. And I'm going to talk about three important considerations SLPs should make when building out their dysphagia treatment plan. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Number one, find out what's impaired. In order to create a treatment plan, we must first find out what it is that we're treating. This is where fees and video fluoroscopy come in. The video fluoroscopy is the fluoroscopic imaging of swallowing using barium sulfate with different food textures and liquid consistencies. For the video fluoroscopy, you can capture the oral, pharyngeal, and cervical esophageal phases of swallowing, primarily in lateral view. Fiber optic endoscopic evaluation of swallowing, or FEES, is the nasoendoscopic video imaging of swallowing using foods and liquids mixed with dye. FEES can capture the pharyngeal phase before, during, and after the swallow and can give us pieces of information we can use to make inferences about the oral phase, like with bolus containment and the esophageal phase, like if the patient has reflux with material escaping the UES. If you see a patient aspirate under instrumentation, the next step is to find out why. How's their laryngeal vestibular closure? Is the larynx elevating much? What about the hyoid bone? Do you see it moving anteriorly? Do you see residue? Where is it and what could be causing it? Molecular residue could be caused by reduced tongue base retraction or reduced pharyngeal squeeze, for example. You might not catch every single thing live during the study, which is why it's important to go back and review the recording frame by frame if possible. Make sure you look for the following. The anatomy. Maybe there's a large cervical osteophyte that's presenting a complete epiglottic inversion, or maybe a large cricopharyngeal bar is resulting in bolus retention at the level of the UES. Timing. Does the patient take an exceptionally long time to move the bolus to the back of their mouth? Is there a delayed swallow initiation? What about when they cough? Is it immediate or delayed? Motor movement and coordination. Is there weakness? How is the swallow coordination? What about the swallow breath coordination? Can you tell if they're exhaling after the swallow or are they inhaling? Discovering what's impaired under instrumentation is both eye-opening and critical for treatment planning. I've been surprised many times by what I've discovered during an instrumental swallow. Sometimes I would see the patient coughing during meals at bedside and be certain that they were aspirating, only to find out they had a beautiful swallow, which left me with further digging. Other times I've had patients look absolutely fine at the bedside, only to discover they're silently aspirating a surprising amount of liquids. Even when a patient would cough on thin liquids, but sound and feel great with thick liquids at bedside, I would be surprised to discover the occasional patient that would cough in response to aspirating thin liquids, but not cough at all when they were also aspirating thickened liquids. I always say I'm never surprised by what I see because I'm always surprised by what I see. Number two, assess strategies under instrumentation. A dysphagia treatment plan might consist of compensatory strategies, which you can assess under instrumentation. Examples of strategies SLPs might assess under instrumentation include bolus hold, breath hold, chin tuck, head turn, head tilt, cued cough, and of course, different liquid consistencies and food textures. These strategies might assist with things like bolus clearance, airway protection, bolus clearance, reducing or eliminating residue, and bolus transit. It gives us a quick snapshot of whether or not they're effective, which is the first step in building our dysphagia treatment plan. I've worked with well-meaning nurses and family members who have told my patients to tuck their chin down at bedside because they heard that the chin tuck strategy helps to protect the airway completely understand where they're coming from as caregivers and we can't fault them for wanting to help. However, sometimes the chin tuck strategy can actually make the patient swallowing worse. I remember being surprised the first time I saw this during an instrumental swallow study. The patient's swallow was actually better with his chin in a neutral position than it was with his chin tucked down. 
In fact, the only time the patient aspirated was when he was using the chin tuck strategy. I showed those images to the family and nurses, and it was an incredibly eye-opening moment for everybody in the room. This is why I would always test strategies under instrumentation, because you never truly know unless you can see what's going on. I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't want to miss, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Number three, learn which exercises target which muscles and impairments, and then implement them. The easiest rule to remember when it comes to swallow rehabilitation is this. The best exercise for swallowing is swallowing. Not only are you encouraging the exact motor patterns required for swallowing to get to work, but the principles of neuroplasticity are activated when we get our patients to swallow. Principles like use it or lose it and use it and improve it. However, simply having your patient swallow over and over again isn't going to cut it, nor is it skilled therapy. This is where targeted, evidence-based exercises and principles of exercise science need to come in. Let's give a few examples of specific dysphagia exercises and which impairments they target. The effortful swallow. This exercise is exactly as it sounds, a swallow that requires increased effort. We might tell our patients to bear down as they swallow hard. Some SLPs might offer visuals like, pretend like you're swallowing a piece of potato chip that's stuck in your throat and you have to really squeeze your throat to move that small piece of potato chip down your throat. This exercise increases the pressure of the oral pharyngeal and esophageal regions during the swallow and can target things like base of tongue residue, reduced base of tongue and posterior pharyngeal wall approximation, molecular residue, piriform sinus residue, decreased hyolaryngeal elevation, decreased pharyngeal stripping wave, reduced epiglottic inversion, and decreased laryngeal vestibular closure. The chin tuck against resistance, CTAR. This exercise requires a ball or anything that can be placed under the chin with instructions for the patient to tuck their chin down, pressing against the object that's providing resistance against the chin. This exercise can target the suprahyoid muscle and reduce UES opening and bolus residue at the piriforms secondary to reduced UES opening. A similar exercise that targets this is the Shakir, which is sort of like a sit up for your head. The patient can lie down, lift their head up, touching their chin to their chest across a series of repetitions. These exercises are contraindicated in patients with recent neck injury or cervical spinal surgery. A final example I'll give is the supraglottic swallow. This requires the patient to take a deep breath, hold it, swallow, then cough. It targets reduced laryngeal vestibular closure and increases airway protection during and after the swallow. Another point I'd like to make regarding choosing the right dysphagia treatment plan is learning what your patient's goals are. You might do an instrumental exam and discover severe pharyngeal dysphagia with aspiration and dig into all the research in the world to come up with the best exercise plan. But ask your patient what they want first. Ultimately, the patient is the decision maker. They don't wanna do swallowing exercises, consume a modified diet or rely on a feeding tube, they have every right to make those decisions. Patient preference is one of those three pillars of evidence-based practice, and we must never ignore that. A colleague of mine shared a story about a patient who had a brainstem stroke and could not generate a complete swallow. Her UES would not relax and her laryngeal elevation was reduced. The medical team was pushing for a PEG tube, but the patient didn't want long-term supplemental nutrition. She was fine with short-term nutrition from Dabhoff tube or an NG tube, but she did not want anything permanent. The physicians were convinced that she would either need a PEG tube or they'd have to discuss hospice. My colleague jumped in, creating an intensive therapy plan based on what she saw on the video fluoroscopy. She worked with the patient five days a week for 90 minutes at a time and had her patient do CTAR, the Shakir, Effort for Swallow, the McNeil Dysphagia Therapy Program, and AMP Care. The patient was extremely motivated and kept up with the exercises. They used ice chips in therapy as well. Within one week, the patient participated in a repeat video fluoroscopy and she was able to safely swallow pureed food and nectar thick liquids. Both my colleague and the patient were in tears. Her targeted therapy plan was a success. Want some free resources specific to dysphagia? Make sure to download our free clipboard kit at www.metaslpcollective.com. If you'd like to learn about a much more detailed list of specific exercises and what they target, make sure to check out page 54 of the Medical SLP Clipboard Kit. Just hop on over to www.medslpcollective.com, download your free clipboard kit today.